Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I am doing pretty well. It's Friday afternoon. I am home. I'm not working, which is great. It's a little bit of a chill in the air, so that's super nice. And I'm wearing long sleeves, which I haven't got to do in some time. So I am super happy about that. Maybe I can cuddle and read a little bit this weekend. So I have a lot of books to go through on this book haul and a lot of stories to tell. So I'm going to try to talk really fast, but I'm going to tell you right now, you are going to add all of these books to your TBR. So get ready. They are so amazing. You guys, I know that I normally do videos on Wednesday and uh, a little bit different this week because I have been out seeing some authors speak live during the week, which has been phenomenal, but it has put me behind on my YouTube-edness. Um, I haven't done a video. I haven't been able to answer any comments, so nothing personal. I'm just a little bit behind because I've been getting up early, going out late. Um, because it's all in San Francisco, which is probably about an hour away from me, but with traffic can take some time for me to get back and forth. Um, and hold on one second, because I'm noticing that I'm looking a little funny here. Is that better? I'm looking at you more than over here. <laughs> I was watching a Mercedes video and she was talking about how weird it is sometimes to talk to the camera and you want to make sure it looks like you're doing eye contact, but sometimes when you're thinking you're up here in the corner, but I digress. I need to talk about books, people. So on Wednesday night, I had the immense pleasure of listening to um, Jasmine Ward talk about her new novel. Now, Jasmine Ward wrote a novel in 2011 called Salvage the Bones, which won the National Book Award, which is phenomenal. If you have not read Salvage the Bones, do it. It is the story of a family dealing with Hurricane Katrina in Mississippi. Um, and it is about them preparing for that. It's about a young girl who finds out she's pregnant and dealing with that while dealing with Katrina. It's about a brother and his obsession with trying to race his dog to win dog fights. It's brutal and beautiful and vicious and heartbreaking and it, it's amazing guys and once you finish it go watch the movie beasts of the southern wild because to me for some reason i think they came out at the same time they're very connected and i think they're amazing but this wasn't what jasmine war was there to talk about she was there to talk about her new book sing unburied sing which just days prior had been nominated and long listed for the national book award again and i think this book may be better may be better. So this is the story of a family. It is a mother and her two children. Um, the two children are mixed race. Um, their father is white and their mother is black. Their father is currently in prison and their mother is hooked on many types of narcotics. She's escaping life because when she does drugs, she sees the ghost of her younger brother who died. Um, and so she is a horrible, horrible mother. Um, the two children, Jojo and Kayla, I think is her name. Kayla, I think, um, are raised basically by their grandparents. At the start of their book, their father um, gets released from Parchment Prison, which is in Mississippi. Now, Jasmine talked about how Parchment Prison was really the impetus for a big portion of the ghost story aspect of this novel. Um, Parchment Prison is a prison that's been around for a very long time, and she was doing her research, and she found out that in the 30s and 40s, young black men, 12 and 13, so children really, would be arrested for silly crimes, loitering, minor little things, and put on Parchment Prison, which, which was a plantation, so basically they would be arrested and put right back into slavery. And that inspired sort of a secondary section of this book. Um, it is, she read from it, you guys, and I was in the audience in a bookstore. Uh, by the way, hats off to Booksmith in San Francisco. It's on Haight and Ashbury, one of my favorite independent bookstores that I go to up there. I could have spent a bazillion dollars in there. But um, I'm really excited about this. I read the first few pages. She read from it. It is gorgeously written, but it also has that grit of the vernacular of the people who are talking. Um, she lives in Mississippi, she knows Mississippi, and it was just phenomenal. Oh, you know what, I wanted to bring it, let me see if I can grab it. She was interviewed by um, 
Julia Shears, who wrote the novel or the memoir, Jesus Land. I'm not going to talk about this a lot, because it, um, but Jesus Land is a phenomenal mem memoir about a girl and her African-American adopted brother, and they are sent to a Christian um, summer camp. Um, that's all I'm going to say. It is so good. She was so lovely. Um, I put a picture of her and I on Instagram. I really wanted to get a picture with Jasmine Ward, but um, she has a new brand new baby, Brando, adorable, who about the end of the book talk was ready to go to bed and was crying. So she was signing books with him on his lap, her lap. So it wasn't appropriate to ask for a picture. Um, but sweet little kid, amazing author. And then the next night I went back because... Eleanor Henderson was there to talk about her novel, The Twelve Mile Straight. Now, I first heard about this book at Booktopia in May. One of the booksellers was like, this book is going to come out and you have to read this. So, this is the story of a family in the 30s in Georgia, in the Jim Crow South. Um, a, a, there's sort of two things that start the book. Sort of. There are two things that start the book. A woman bears twins. One is white and one is mixed race. And... Basically, a, a black man is accused and lynched, and it's the effects of those decisions and that action on this family and the saga of that. Um, this book was inspired by Eleanor Henderson's father, who grew up in Georgia in the 30s and 40s, and when he talked about Georgia, never talked about sort of this aspect that Eleanor found out about when she was researching this book. Um, and it kind of informed her about the world in which her father really lived. So that's The Twelve Miles Straight by Eleanor Henderson. When she read from this book, this book is a little more, a little less lyrical, a little more straightforward in its narrative. And I will say that it's pretty dark. So um, be ready for that. But I think you will like this. It's a little bit of a chunkster. Um, but I think that sounds really exciting. And if you haven't heard Chris over at Chris's Bookish Cauldron, he talked about how excited he was about this book. He's going to pop up later in this video, too. Um, and he does a great video on it. So go check out his channel. I'll link his channel down below. He talks about this novel. So that is The Twelve Mile Straight by Eleanor Henderson. I have to talk a lot faster because I really do have a lot of books and I don't want this video to go so, so long. The next book is Grace by Natasha Dion. This book was actually talked about on Literary Disco. Um, Todd Goldberg was the MFA um, super, uh, supervisor. <laughs> That's the wrong word. Um, he was her mentor while she was in the program. She, Natasha Dion, is a fantastic attorney. I love her style. I, I'm, yeah, got a big old boy crush on her. Um, this is a story of the South, of a woman who is on the run, and she winds up in a brothel run by a, I love the term that they use in the book, um, a Jewish madam, a gun-toting Jewish madam named Cynthia. She falls in love with a white man and has a child, and it's the story of how that child is affected by the South as he winds back up in slavery, but he is mixed race so he has sort of the advantage of being mistaken I, I don't know that it's an advantage I don't even know how to explain that but um, the story is he has blonde hair and whitish skin and so he is able to pass as a white person and it's the story of all of that um, I, this is for my book club, and I'm super excited, and um, that's Grace by Natasha Dion. Todd Bolt Goldberg raved about this book, and I'm super excited about it. Okay, next, Gabrielle Zevin's Young Jane Young. Now, I read Gabrielle Zevin's The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, and I talked about it on this channel before. If you guys remember, I really enjoyed it. The story of a man who owns a bookshop, his wife passes away, and a child just appears in sort of their relationship. This Young Jane Young is a political drama. Not really. But it's about a woman who works in politics and winds up having a solicit affair and disappearing pregnant to a small town. And when she has the baby and years later is asked to run for sort of a minor public office, sort of how her history comes back to haunt her. And um, I bought this at Books, Inc. Um, Santa Clara, which is kind of my local independent bookstore. It's about 20 minutes away from where I live. I've been spending a lot of time and a lot of money there, um, and I'm super excited about it. I really like the cover. I find it very empowering, um, but Young Jane Young, and that is by Gabrielle Zevin. I told you guys in my rambling video that Unnamed Press had sent me two arcs. Now, 
Both of these books are out now, so you can actually get them from them directly. The first one they sent me is After the Flare by Deju Bryce Olakotin. I'm totally butchering his name. Um, but follow him on Twitter. Super interesting. And all I'm going to say about this is this is about Europe and Asia are knocked offline, satellites are dead, and the only country that is left with sort of a space program is Nigeria. I heard someone, um, his first book, I believe, was called Nigerians in Space. So I kind of am fascinated by this man and um, this point of view because it's very unique, I think. And um, it says here... The Niger Nigeria has been flooded with advanced biohacking technologies and scramble to get Nigeria into space has attracted dangerous people who want otherwise. What's more, the militant Islamic group Boko Haram is slowly encroaching on the spaceport, leaving a trail of destruction. And something else is happening too. A clan of mysterious nomads has discovered an ancient technology more powerful than anything Brackett or his team, Brackett's our main character, of scientists has ever known. How will all these divergent paths come together in the triumph of um, Olakun's latest, one that will keep you guessing until the very last page. So that's After the Flare by Deji Bryce Olakutun. I'm saying your name wrong. I'm really sorry, but um, I'm super excited about your book. So the next one is that is called um, Dijin, Dijin City? Dijin? I'm saying that wrong too. I really wish that I could just push a button and pronounce words. God, this video is super long. By Saeed Z. Hossein. And I'm going to read the back to this to you. Um, in the bed is a lonely kid living in a crumbling mansion in a super dense, super chaotic third world capital of Bangladesh. His father is a doctor, is the black sheep of his clan, and the once um, illustrious Khan Raham family. A drunken, loudish widower, he refused to allow Imbaldad to go to school, and the only thing Imbaldad knows about his mother is the official cause of her early demise, death by Imbaldad. So, when he falls into a supernatural coma, the father, Imbaldad and his older cousin, the white cousin, the wise-cracking slacker Rais, learn that Imbaldad's dad was in fact a magician and a trusted emissary, emissary of the Dingin world. And the Dinjins, as it turns out, are displeased. A hunt has been announced, and 10-year-old Imbladed is the prey. So doesn't that sound fantastic? Um, a sort of magician, Bangladeshian drama. Um, has a little bit of fantasy and magic in it, so I think that sounds really good. I have wanted to read this since I found about about it months and months ago, and I'm so happy that they sent me it. I tell you guys, Unnamed Press is where it's at so many good books. So I have four left. So let's see if we can rush through this. I bought this book for the cover. And this is Eggshells by Catriona Lolly. Lolly. And I'm going to read the back to you. It says, Vivian doesn't feel like she fits in and never has. As a child, she was so whimsical that her parents told her she'd been left by fairies. Now, living alone in Dublin, the neighbors treat her like she's crazy. Her older sister condescends to her, social workers seem to have registered as troubled, and she hasn't a friend in the world. So she decides it's time to change her life. She begins by advertising in the newspaper for a friend. Not any friend. She wants one named Penelope. Meanwhile, she roams the city mapping out its new neighborhood every day, seeking escape route to a better world, the other world her parents told her she came from. And then one day, someone named Penelope answers her. That's all I got. And I think that sounds fantastic. I have a feeling Penelope may be from the fairy world. That's what I'm hoping. Is that what you're hoping? And I think that sounds really, really good. I know that we've all felt a little bit on the outside at one time in our life. So I love books about that. And um, she studied English literature at Trinity College in Dublin. So I love supporting anyone who studied literature. The next book is the book I'm calling for those of you that like to read scary stuff in October, and that's The Children's House by Charles Lambert. Now, this is about Morgan Fletcher, Fletcher who is disfigured and a millionaire, owns a fortune and a huge house, and one day two children arrive at the house, and he takes them in, and then all of a sudden more children arrive at the house. But as they go through the house, they find secrets about the history of the house and the history of um, Morgan himself. 
and it says, weaving elements of psychological suspense, Jamesian stream of consciousness, and neo-Gothic horror. The Children Home is a gender-defying, alterly bewitching masterwork that, that stirs the imagination in the manner of Roald Dahl and C.S. Lewis. So I think that's this is going to be super creepy because, I mean, come on, look at that cover. Super creepy, right? And I'm super excited to get to it. It's not a big one, so maybe I can rush through it real quick. But that is The Children's House by Charles Lambert. I told you Chris from Chris's Bookish Cauldron was going to pop up again, and that's because he has talked a number of times about The Bone People by Carrie Holm. On my Goodreads page, he said that this was the book that he wished more people knew about. Now, interestingly enough, only two people have ever won the Booker Prize from New Zealand. One is The Luminaries by Eleanor Canton, which we all have heard of, and The Bone People um, by Carrie Hume. Now, I don't know much about this book other than... Uh, the Booker Prize winning begins in a tower in New Zealand on the New Zealand Sea. The woman who lives there is Kerwin Holmes, part Maori, part European. She is an artist, estranged from her art, a woman in exile from her family. One night she is disrupted by a speechless Merc girl boy named Simon who tries to steal from her and then repays her with the most precious, precious possession. As Kirwan succumbs to Simon's feral charm, she also falls under the spell of his Maury foster father, Joe. Out of this unorthodox trinity, Carrie Hume has created what is at once a mystery, a love story, and an ambitious exploration into the zone where Maury and European New Zealand meet. Alice Walker raves about this book, but look at this cover, people. Look at this cover. Now, it's a bit of a chunkster, but come on. That's The Bone People by Carrie Hume, winner of the booker, so do that, okay? Last but not least, um, you guys know how much I loved um, Nettie Okafor's two books, Benty and Benty Home. Well, she has a YA novel out. Now, I don't read much YA, but Akata Witch um, came out, and I saw it. I think the cover is, again, fantastic. Um, if you don't follow her on Instagram, I highly recommend you. She's fascinated with bugs and insects, and she takes the most fantastic pictures of them. But this book says, Sunny Nazwe lives in Nigeria, but she was born in New York City. Her features are West African, but she's albino. She's a terrific athlete, but can't go out into the sun to play soccer. There seems to be no place where she fits in. And then she discovers something amazing. She is a free agent with latent magical power, and she has a lot of catching up to do. Soon she's part of a, muse, uh, of a quartet of magic students studying the visible and the invisible, learning to change reality. But just as she's finding her footing, Sunny and friends are asked for a, by the magical authorities to help track down a career criminal who knows magic too. Will their training be enough to help them against the threat whose powers greatly outnumber theirs? So I thought that sounded fun. Throw in some YA every time, every once in a while. She's a phenomenal writer. That's Akata's Witch, and there you go. This video is super long, so I apologize, but I wanted to talk to you. I still have a ton of books, guys, but I wanted to get a bunch of them in. So this is a book haul. I recommend every single book we just talked about. I want you to put all of them on your TBR. If you've read any of them, let's talk about it below. If any of them spark your interest, let's talk about that below. As always, if you are a returning uh, viewer, thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. So nice to meet you. And until next time, happy reading. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.